Hi everyone, Lee Jude 2512 here, and I've got a book here that uh, I think is a pretty new release. It's called Harry Potter The Broom Collection and Other Artifacts from the Wizarding World. Now, uh, some people that uh, saw me cover the illustrated edition of um, Quidditch Through the Ages, uh, they will know that I like Quidditch and I like the sport of Quidditch and the brooms and the balls and everything like that. So. If that was a real sport, I probably would play it. Um, not the Muggle Quidditch, but, you know, the actual Quidditch. <laughs> so I thought we'd take a look at this. And it seems to cover a lot of different things. It seems to cover a variety of different brooms and also covers um, the uh, brooms from Fantastic Beasts, uh, a bit of the Quidditch rules, and some other bits and pieces as well that's used for, I think it's used for transportation as well. And it's a lovely bit of art there. And I like these, I like these books. So this is the introduction to the contents. So there's introduction, the brooms in the wizarding world, the sport of Quidditch itself, Quidditch uniforms and fan wear, I like that. Maybe some of something from Quidditch through the ages will be in here. Professional Quidditch and the 422nd Quidditch World Cup, the Order of the Phoenix, Battle of the Seven Potters, Escape from the Room of Requirement, the Brooms of Fantastic Beasts, the Blueprints, Conclusion and Broom Index. So that's interesting. So it mentions, uh, so for or the Phoenix, Battle of the Seven Potters, the Room of Requirement. I'm assuming that's like when they use brooms in the in the in those moments, and that's the firebolt there. So, so that would uh, go through a few things here. I'm not going to show you everything. I'll show you some art. Uh, I really like that. That's probably when Harry first got his firebolt. I want to assume. Uh, so brooms in the Wizarding World, and. They, I really like them. What I like about broomsticks is, in the books especially, it's addressed that there's many different types, the Comet 260 and all those other ones as well. And it's pretty much like um, a real life equivalent of the new uh, iPhone or the new car, the new shoes. If you, have, if you have money, you have the best broom going. And I really like that. Uh, it shows that, you know, I mean, these were apparently early broom designs. Uh, I really like that. So that the purple one at the bottom reminds me of Serafina Pickery's wand from Fantastic Beasts a little bit, and then the the dragon with the little uh, bits of mildew and stuff on the. Well, so uh, these these are really nice. Um, so let's see. The concept and visual development artist would reference the Harry Potter novels by author J.K. Rowling and confer with production designer Stuart Craig, who developed the overall visual look for the films. Okay, yeah, I've heard of Stuart Craig before. He's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's great. I'm not going to pause. You can pause the video if you like to have a look, but uh, there's different broom makers as well. Some more well-known than others. Uh, Nimbus and made the, 2000, the Nimbus 2000 and the Nimbus 2001. I think that was covered in Quidditch Through the Ages, how after the Nimbus 2001, I think, I don't know if that was the last broom they made because after that they weren't really mentioned anymore. It was the Firebolts and other ones as well. And yeah, so... There is, it just it talks about uh, the actual people constructing the broom, uh, the artwork. Yeah, and once once the design was approved, art director Hattie Story's team of artists drafted broom blueprints outlining the length, material, curvature, as well as any other finishing touches and detailing. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, like the runes along the firebolt should be applied. I always wondered why the runes were in the firebolt. Um, maybe to magically make it go faster. I don't know. Uh, that's that looks to me like the Nimbus two thousand. Just I'm assuming. Uh, so yeah, there's. Uh, not all brooms seen in the Harry Potter films are flown. However, for a Goblet of Fire, assistant buyer Tamazin Simmons required a large quantity of brooms that did not need to fly, so she made contact with a broom making facility in Hampshire, who was. Okay, wow. The broom squires of Buckingham Palace. More than eighty brooms were constructed for the film out of large birch and hazel branches. Uh, that's very nice as well. I, I like this these information this part of information. So, uh, flying class. These are the flying class training brooms for first years, and the the book is really nice. I mean, I'm going to be reading this in a little while in in its entirety, and flying among the winged keys. So that's that's just going to be broom advertisements. That's really cool. So you see all these like self cleaning, you know the, you know for cleaning your broom and stuff, and I really like that. So, the, especially in Daily Profit as well, the Daily, Pro Daily Profit is genius. Mina Lima, the designers, are selling an actual Daily Profit, but it's about £400, so I cannot afford that. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, so then it talks about Quidditch a little bit, yeah. So the, the, the rules of Quidditch, and then here's Harry Potter's Nimbus 2000. And this is it here. When I was a kid, I loved this. I loved the look of it. I was like, I want one. Even though I wasn't a wizard, I really wanted one. Um, and it gives some information about the design process, I think, and a bit of the story context. Um, yep, the Brim's logo is engraved in gold at the tip of the handle. There's a, yeah, obviously there's a bicycle seat that's bolted to the broom for flying sequences in the films. A set of foot pedals was added that would create, that would cradle the actor's legs as they flew. Okay, yeah, it's good. Unlike the seats, the foot pedals were a visible part of each broom's design. So yeah, right here. Okay, that's cool. It, make, it makes sense. So you can kind of put the broomstick down. And this is one of my favorites as well in Nimbus 2001. Just the kind of sleek black look with the black and silver. There's Draco's. Uh, the Jet Black Nimbus 2001 has a straight handle that ends in a normal snake-like shaped tip engraved in silver with the 2001 logo. And yeah, it gives a bit, it just it really kind of goes in depth with the detail and the design of it. And the entire Slytherin team has a Nimbus 2001s bought for them by Lucius Malfoy. Um, yeah, it's, the attachment was adjustable, the broomsticks were mounted in a hydraulic pole with a seat at the end for the actors. So yeah, if you want to see the, if it's, it's really funny, if you want to see the behind the scenes for the films, it's really nice to, it's funny to see the actors talking about it sitting on the broomsticks. Very uncomfortable, apparently. Uh, yep, there's the fire bolt with the runes attached. It looks like it's almost burnt, doesn't it, just along here, but a really nice design. I liked it, I like it a lot. And yeah, that's because his Nimbus 2000 was blown away in the Prisoner of Azkaban, destroyed by the Whomping Willow. Um, the fire bolt was given, given to him by Sirius Black. And... Yep, it's faster than the Nimbus, uh, the Nimbus line in speed, so it's better. So, yeah, I like this. And then obviously the Prisoner of Azkaban, uh, the director says they commissioned new wands for the actors with more organic designs and exotic woods. So we, we knew that like, the, the wands changed designs in the third film to kind of be more like rough from a tree, especially Harry's wand. Harry, it looks like it's just been a, you know, it's just snapped off of a tree. Um, the firebolt also reflects the new aesthetic. The handle is made from knobby, knobby dark wood that twists out of the bristle head. It straightens to the tip, but I'm, I wonder if it mentions anything. There's a line of 10 symbols etched in gold along this section, which visual development artist Dermot Power suggested would have been burned into the wood. The bristle heads itself is trimmed, though not as smoothly as for the nimbuses, and bound with two silver bands. So that's really cool. Uh, like that. And then, oh, here we go. Embellishing the firebolt. So even more information about the firebolt. Even designs for the logo. And yeah, that's really cool. I want to go back. Just I'm going to skip quite a bit ahead and go to the... Nimbus. Oh, here is Hogwarts Quidditch uniforms. Oh, that's really cool. So it talks about the Quidditch uniforms. So it doesn't just cover the broomsticks, it covers the um, uniforms as well. And then all the moments that they were used in the film. Broom care products. That's really nice. Uh, the servicing kit. I'm sure that like, Harry got this for Christmas in the books at one point. So that's nice to see, like visually see it. So, and then Snitch Snatch of the Quidditch game. I'm pretty sure I have that game. Is that an actual game? I'm fairly sure I bought this. I have this. I recognize the board and everything. It's not called Snitch Snatcher. I think it's just called the Golden Snitch. But it is a very nice, uh, it's a very nice game. I've played it a couple of times. There's a new Quidditch game on Kickstarter, actually. I might cover that when I get it. Because I have, I have bid on it. So oh, here's Kingsley Shackle Boat's Broom. So yeah, this, this book is amazing. I really like it. I'm not going to show everything off because there's no time. But it shows everything. Just Death Eater Brooms. I never really, no you don't really notice that when the films are out. Uh, how much detail is in there, but they they do, they put a lot of detail into everything in Harry Potter. And then here's the escape from the room comment. So I, I would really recommend this book a lot. Um, I'm fascinated with this kind of stuff. I love this kind of stuff, uh, especially in the books. It talks about, you know, to look after the brooms. And the, one of my favorite scenes is in the, the burrow when they're all just in a competitive game, a friendly game in the burrow where they just break, they go into their broom shed and just break out the old Comet 260s and just have fun and all the Weasleys. It's really fun. I just love that kind of atmosphere. So I would definitely recommend this. Um, it was about £15 from Amazon, and I don't know where the price is where you guys are, but yeah, uh, I would definitely recommend getting this. So that's going to be it from me, guys. If you have this and you found any information that you like, you found interesting, let me know, because um, I, I really like all this. I find it really interesting. So I will talk to you guys later. All right. Bye, guys.